Happy International Women's Day. Thank you, you too. By the way, <laughs> um, I want to talk about strong female characters. Why do you think it's important more than ever now to have strong female characters in not only books but on screen? Well, I think it's really always been important um, and kind of a long time coming that we're starting to see more and more of it. Um, and I, sorry, I've just been thinking a lot lately about how strange it is that we consider, you know, the female market to be like a narrow category. Yeah. Considering there are so many women who want to go to movies and want to see stories that are, you know, kind of about them. So um, I think it's important for people to see themselves represented in media, whether it's um, especially people who are underrepresented, like well, the people of color and and uh, and women and um, people from all different kinds of backgrounds and experiences. So the more we can see people represented on screen, the more people can feel like the, they're valued in the world. Now, I know that it seems like such an obvious thing to a lot of people, but why do you think there's still a, a negative backlash associated with any sort of feminist discussions? I don't know. I think people probably feel a little threatened by it, like um, you're trying to take something away from them. But that's, I don't think, the point at all. I think the point is to create more space for more people. So um, I don't I don't really get it. I mean, when people, when there's backlash, it makes me pretty angry. So You're just like, Tris saved the world? Yeah. And you're complaining? She it's like, saved you. <laughs> it's like she's not taking anything away from you. And I think that's why I like the relationship between Tris and Four is he doesn't feel threatened by her. He feels like the two of them are cooperating and working together to make their world a better place. And I don't think he feels like her strength makes him weaker. Hmm. Uh, is this promoting that um, being different is actually a really empowering thing? I think so. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> um, I think the more you can acknowledge uh, that the person you are is worth being, um, the better off you'll be, really, internally and um, in your capacity to do something good in the world. Uh, now, uh, the next installment is part one and part two. Right. Are you kind of excited that the ride's just going on a little bit further now? It's kind of nice, <laughs> yeah, because this series was such a huge part of my life for a long time, and I get to kind of, now, even now that I'm done writing it, I get to uh, ease out of it slowly. So I don't have to say goodbye to these characters in this world just yet, you know, I get a little more time. Already on to the next book, can you tell us anything about that? Yeah, well, a little. Uh, it's pretty, it's in the pretty early stages, but um, I'm writing a duology, so two books uh, in a series, and it's kind of in the vein of Star Wars, so set in space. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's about a young man who unites with someone who is supposed to be his enemy in order to um, get revenge. So that's a little vague, but it should be really fun. I'm having fun working on it. I was going to talk about what is the next theme because it kind of seems that there's a lot of trends going on uh, with novels at the moment. Do you think space is back? Uh, well, I hope so because I love space, <laughs> especially ladies in space. That'll be really fun. <laughs> uh, I actually wanted to geek out with you um, because I know that you're a big fan of Star Wars and Harry Potter. Harry Potter! Right! <laughs> yes, I'm a Hufflepuff to the core. I'm a I'm a Gryffindor. Oh man. Well, I think we can still be friends. I got like <laughs> totally. So, I'm like the prefect of Gryffindor. I'm so Gryffindor. Mm. But who's gonna be laughing when I win the Triwizard Cup? What? Yeah. There you are. <laughs> it's happening. Um, obviously, the young um, young adult audience has this same grasp with the Divergent world. What is something that you've learnt from this core audience, whether it's via social media? Like, what have they held on to, or what have like? Because they're in the next generation. Right. What's like a word or, or something that they're that they're putting out there that you're like, I didn't know about that. I'm learning something from them. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, I really think that um, I don't know if I can like think of a specific word or concept or anything like ship. that but ship ship me. yeah well i kind of grew up understanding what that was because i was involved in like geekery you know um but that is a big deal that um to everyone god uh but i think mostly tumblr has exposed me to how deeply young people think about what they're consuming like they will analyze something in the most thoughtful way almost like an essay you know like that they would turn in for school but they're there's this like community of people who are debating, you know, things in pop culture, like especially with Marvel, um, like superheroes and uh, and with Harry Potter. Like I just saw a treatise on like why Professor Snape is not a hero, that kind of thing. So it's just a fascinating world. <laughs> hey everyone, if you like this video, click that thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel. It's free and helps you stay up to date with all the latest movie news, as well as our daily AMC movie talk show. Also, make sure that you follow us on Facebook 
and Twitter to stay up to date with all of our special promotions, contests, and prize giveaways.